Hey there. A quick note about this week's episode. Dave and I are both traveling for business this week, so we're bringing you one of our favorite episodes from 2017 with Mike Pyle, founder of Uppercase Branding. Mike's story about how he started Uppercase is compelling, and he brings some great tips on naming and branding that I know you'll enjoy. Before we start, a quick message about one of our favorite sponsors, Text Expander from Smile. We love Text Expander because it saves us so much time when managing communication on our own and with our teams. You get to create snippets of often repeated text, such as your address, your contact info, anything else you can think of, up to enti- I mean, entire pages of text. Whatever text you use frequently, Text Expander can save you time. I've used Text Expander with our entire customer service department to be sure that we were all sending out the same messages using the same policies, and keeping our answers consistent. If you want to be sure that your sales reps are sending out the same data to their leads, well, that you can create those emails, save them in Text Expander, then share them with your team. And with just a keystroke, they get to expand the text and send out the messages that you want. The app works on macOS, Windows, iPhone, iPad, and now on Chrome, and they've added a new visual editor to create snippets even faster than before. It's awesome. I'm also excited to let you know that one of the founders of Smile will be joining us next month for an interview. I'm really looking forward to sharing their story with you. So check out Text Expander at textexpander.com forward slash podcast and select the small business show from the list of podcasts when you sign up to get 20% off your first year. Then you can come back and thank us later for referring you to this awesome software. All right, let's get to this week's show. folks and welcome to the small business show the show by for and about small business owners here in durham new hampshire i'm dave hamilton and in Concord, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm good, man. How are you? <laughs> That's good. I think we're at, uh, not only are we at, at opposite parts of the country, but we are opposite spectrums of the weather. Uh, uh, yes. You know, it's about 80 out here today, and I imagine it's a little colder, <laughs> colder out there. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not terrible here. It's it's in the 30s, but but we got about two feet of snow yesterday into last night. Nice. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. Well, hey, you know, and I, I love talking about the weather because I'm getting older, of course, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I, I I want to welcome to the show uh, Mike Pyle today from Uppercase Branding. Uh, welcome to the show, Mike. Hello, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming, hanging out with us, talking about your business and uh, talking about branding and naming. We're looking forward to getting some getting some tips. So we always like to start the show by you know just talking a little bit about the history of your business and and the impetus for starting. And um, so so give us some background. You know when you started Uppercase and and what pushed you out of the corporate nest, if you will, to go out on your own. Uh, sure. Um, just a little bit about us to start. Uh, Upcase sure. Branding is is a verbal identity consultancy, and what we what we do is we create brand names. Um, it's sort of an odd niche business, and but there's actually many many uh, people who do what we do. So so we create brand names for for companies, products, and and features. And and I have a long background in corporate uh, advertising and and marketing. Um, and the answer to your question is what sort of pushed or, or pulled me out was a confluence of events. Um, I had come across a company that, that uh, we had worked with through a client that developed brand names, and I thought that that was uh, one extraordinarily odd. And then the more I got into it, um, it was I found it extraordinarily interesting. And, and guys, everyone talks about their, their passion, right? And I, it only took you know, me about 45. 50 years to find my passion but uh, but I, I truly I truly did and that's what and that's what pulled me out um, um, the idea of one sort of controlling my own fate of dealing with folks at a more senior level um, as well as a focus on stories and I mean we're essentially a creative services business so stories narratives creating identities that helps our clients engage their customers is something that that interests me and is where my 
skill set lies. And and in the previous world, um, you know, advertising and, and corporate marketing um, sort of veered away from storytelling and more to crunching numbers and data um, and information. And while that's important, it's just it's not as as interesting uh, to me. So that's that's sort of how I made the leap. Huh. That's awesome. That's fascinating. I, I could see that. Uh you know, your, your focus on storytelling and bringing out that message, uh, that that's, it is really powerful. We talk a lot about it here on the show. Um, so y- you made this transition to, to go out on your own. Um, w- what was the, uh, every, we all have different expectations when we got started, you know, what surprised you the most about, um, w- when you left and got going and, you know, started getting clients, um, t- talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, you know, the, the transition actually was not that great a leap. There is a sort of a misperception that the corporate world has um, a lot of uh, resources and, and, and abundant resources. But but my experiences were always lean and mean. It was, you know, Mike, do more uh, for less. Um, and, and operating your own business, especially when you're the one cutting the checks, uh, it's, it's the same. But I guess if there was any surprise, it was not about the sheer amount amount of work in 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 ramping up the business starting the business managing it day to day but the the I think the big difference is is there is so much to do that the skill and the discipline of 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 prioritizing the tasks prioritizing uh, the projects um, is I think one of one of the toughest because you don't have the luxury of a boss telling you what to do. They don't say focus on client X or do project uh, number two. Um, it's, it's you know, of the 400 things I need to do today, uh, what am I going to do? And, and so how I do it is, is um, it's the very, the very first thing on my to-do list is make a to-do list, and then I can scratch that off and feel... And feel- <laughs> I, feel, hey, I like well, that. There's, yeah, there's something to be said about scratching it off, but th- this, is, this is perhaps uh, one of the best best uh, most concise descriptions of the stark difference between working for yourself versus working for someone else because like you said all the work still needs to get done you still need to do lots of work in order to uh, be profitable and successful and all of that but but there's that one difference that you don't have someone b- sort of breathing down your neck or I mean and not necessarily in a negative way but someone telling you what to do and uh, and that that can be a scary thing. It can, it can obviously be a very liberating thing, too, but but it can be a very scary thing uh, for some people. And even even just for any of us on some days, it's like, whoa, crap, what do I do today? <laughs> It's uh, I think it's both liberating um, and and scary. And and if you can, I mean, I spend the first 30 minutes every morning with with my coffee going, all right, these are the, you know, the three things I need to do. And if I get to four and five, um, that's uh, that's great. And and the other thing is, is, you know, you, you got to be able to, to knock off at the end of the day, uh, too. And and, um, you know, my bank book uh, uh, doesn't really like that. I that I knock <laughs> off. But but my my brain and, and emotional state does. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. True. Well, I can imagine, you know, especially in a creative you know field, you, you could easily just you know run yourself down where you're not kicking out those kinds of ideas and, uh, you know, th- those kinds of things. So you got to be able to disconnect, I think. Yeah. Well, that that's really true, and that's one of the great things about about being in a creative field, be it you know I don't know making wine or 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 you know making music or whatever is is you can intensively focus on it, and then and then if you're capable, you can turn it off. But it never really goes off. It it just sort of compartmentalizes and, and marinates in another part of your brain. So you know when you're out on a jog or mountain biking or taking a shower or unwinding at the end of the day, um, something clicks. And you go, oh, wow, I got, you know, I got my new lyric. I got a new riff. I got a new name. Yeah. Yeah. And so how how often does that kind of thing happen with with your, you know, workflow? I I imagine uh, sitting down and going over all kinds of naming and branding ideas. But then, you know, just out of the blue, as you're kind of peripherally thinking about it, uh, things come in and you just you have that aha moment. Is, Is that more common than not? 
it's it's quite common, but 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 I'll, I'll I'll clarify just a bit and put a little context around it. Sure, because um, we've actually we blogged about this is about how to be creative, and there is and there is you know a common misperception that you kick back and your feet on your chair and you stare at the stars and and muse and an idea comes to you and and that's not really um, the way it works, or at least that's not the way we work at at, at Uppercase. We use a lot of stimuli. Um, since we're in the business of, of words and creating words and creating names, um, we use a lot of dictionaries and thesauri and Google, of course. And so there's a very, very intense focus on on adding fuel to the creative fire to, to ignite it. Um, and then then your point is well taken, which is, OK, the the, you, the, the returns start to diminish. I need I need to back off. But but all that information and stimulus is still in there. So so an idea will come to you while you're driving your kids to school or something and you think it came out of nowhere. Um, but in but in fact, it really didn't. It yep. was marinated and percolating yeah. with the very concrete um, effort that you put in earlier. You know, this is interesting because we talk about this a lot on the show is is you need to sort of intentionally create that downtime. And, and you said driving the kids, uh, <laughs> it, but that's, that's one of them. But, yeah. you know, I always say I've, for a long time, I've had my office on the same property as the house. So I don't get that commute time, but I find taking a shower or whatever, just that sort of that time when you let your brain sort of freely associate and just do whatever it needs to do. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that is great. And we we talk about driving a lot. Dave and I have had this conversation over the years many times about, oh, I got this big, long drive in front of me. It's going to be great because it's very creative, you know, and, and uh, can be very stimulating. That's great. Um, so l- let, let's talk about uh, marketing. I mean, from, from an outside view, from a layman's view, my view, uh, I look at this, you know, this naming and branding is, you know, it's, it's another form of marketing and getting the names out there. What about marketing for uppercase? Um, you know, h- how did you market your business and, and get it starting, started out there and, and get your name out there? Yeah, good good question. Um, a little bit of background is is that you know my team and I all have um, uh, backgrounds in marketing and, and generating demand. So we had you know a bit of a head start um, as opposed to maybe a, a chef who's looking to start their own restaurant or a or a person with a retail um, background. Um, but we believe that that any marketing uh, effort really begins with understanding who your prospect is or your customer and they're actually two different people right and work back from there and and so there are many ways to do this and this is probably a topic for a whole nother show but but there is you really need to understand who you're speaking to what their pain points are what their purchase decision process is and segment those folks into manageable groups you know you can't sell everything to to everybody and that then that's really marketing 101 um, we're a business to business company so uh, you know and in the naming world um, our challenge is you never know when a company is going to need a new brand name for their product or feature or even even a new a new you know if they're renaming their company the way um, you know Anderson Consulting did with uh, Accenture so by the time we hear about it they've already got a name it's already in in the news there's no seasonality there's no predictable purchase cycle there's right. there's no single yeah. decision maker um, and so any of the normal marketing metrics you would you would depend on um you know didn't work and, and furthermore we we're just started right we weren't on anybody anybody's radar so what we did was look to a market segment that already had an installed base of client prospects in that case it was it was advertising agencies so the business of naming is is oh. fun and creative but many people find it extraordinarily painful um, it's fun for about 20 minutes and then the lawyers get involved and and the boss goes, you know, that sounds like the name of my mother-in-law. So, <laughs> so yeah. when we happen to relish that that challenge. Um, and so given those two those two points, we zigged where others zagged. Um, we 
undertook a lot of direct mail. We built a database um, from scratch of advertising agencies and wrote a snail mail to them, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, um, to each of those and says, hey, introducing us, we're in the business of naming. We know that sometimes it's a, it's a real pain. Um, we know that you might not enjoy it. We know that you might not do it profitably. If you have a client who has a naming need, we are here to help and we can help you um, behind the scenes. We can, we would love to have a referral. We can work uh, along uh, side by side. Um, and that built our business and that gave us the base for some referrals, for some, some repeat business. So, so even, you know, in this day of, of LinkedIn and Facebook and social media and electronic marketing, um, uh, we built our business on direct mail and, wow. uh, and it was really successful actually. That's really That's, interesting. Uh, yeah. So, and, and this was, I mean, just started in the last, what, six or seven years, right? That's right. Yeah. Huh. So DM, so we, so, DM still works. Direct mail still works. Yeah. And that's what, you know, when, when I'd get responses, uh, I'd jump for joy. I mean, as all any new small business owner knows, those first sales are are really, really cool. Um, and that was exact, exactly my response. Look, direct mail still works. And, and here, here's our here's our thinking on it is that is that, you know, one, an email is very easy to delete. Um, any email that you get from somebody you don't know is almost yeah. always spam and always um, a, a sales pitch. But when you get a letter um, that looks like a letter, not obvious uh, uh, junk mail or bulk mail, um, it, it, you know, we think it's a gift. It's a little gift in the mail. And it is really hard to throw that out without opening it. You, you know, I'm human curiosity. Curiosity is such that, look, it's uh, I can open this up and I'll find out in a nanosecond whether it appeals to me right. um, or not. Yeah, it's OK. I so love you're, that idea. you're almost yeah. almost leveraging the fact that email exists and is more, uh, uh, you know, more widespread as the reason that your direct mail sales worked or your direct mail marketing worked, I should say. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's 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 you know in any direct response, you know the list is really important, and in of our course. business sector, that was really key. But I think we also had a compelling, um, a compelling pitch, and then and then a and then a fun little thing um, is we followed up with that with a direct mail premium, right? A little a little gadget widget, and in this case, um, we had uh, shot glasses made with our logo on it, sent them out to all the people who didn't respond the first time with a little note that said, Hey, give us a shot. Nice. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> we, great. I can't, we got, we got, <laughs> we got five or six pieces of significant business from that. And everyone who said, they said, boy, that's, that's really neat. That's really neat. And, and it sort of, it sort of works the way we think names ought to work, which is there is a, a metaphorical reinforcement of it. Shot glass, give us a chance. Um, you know, maybe a little pedestrian, but boy, did it work. I'm totally going to yeah. steal that idea. Yeah, I, I was brilliant. just going to say, these are, we always say, you know, uh, uh, I always say, I learned the most on the show, and I love that. And we, we had a, a tool guy on the show running a tool business, and they sent out little uh, screwdriver tips in the, the uh, they'll go into like a drill or something that these sure. contractors use. And it was like, here's a tip from Casey Tool. And he had a little tip, their little tool thing. I was like, that's another, uh, you know, you're recognizing of that, how, hey, how that, uh, you know, plays into uh, that marketing, that cognizant awareness. Is, uh, that's yeah. really powerful. I'm stealing that one. Yeah. <laughs> See, there <laughs> you tip. go. You got that's it. what we do. I love it. And, and, the, and you're right. We, everyone is so inundated with either pitches via the phone, where, you know, our phone rings here all day long with people trying to sell stuff, or the email, which is, you know, nobody pays attention to that. Getting something in the mail, uh, whether it's that you know, initial pitch or a thank you card, a thank you letter, you know, that it's powerful and, and often ignored, often ignored. That's true. So it sounds like somebody was going to say, have, no, I'm just, my mind okay. is blown. This is awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, like, Mike, yeah. Thank, yeah I'll, we're, we're not finished, but I'm going to say thank you. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. thank you. But I am actually curious, I, you know, how, well, I'm curious about your creative process, right? Because I, it, we, every business is, it requires some level of creativity. Yours is very much like that's your product is, is the, right. you know, is rooted in that. But, um, you know, you, you talked a little bit about it where you said, you know, these, you, you sort of seed these ideas, um, 
it, it, but I like more intentionally than you might in in another business, right? And I feel like people that that don't run necessarily creative driven businesses could learn something about doing like being intentional about your seeding that creativity. And and so I'm just curious to hear a little more about what you do with that there. Yeah, absolutely. And and this you can't steal, but but your your <laughs> your point is is really well taken that that you know our our end product is a solution like anybody else's, but it, sure. it is much more creatively driven. Um, but you know, even your even your tool guy, if uh, he or she is faced with a, a problem or a challenge, uh, seemingly intractable, um, applying uh, creative techniques, very specific creative techniques, not necessarily brainstorming. We think that's a waste of time, but 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 specific creative techniques that that stimulate. Um, um, ideas is is one really fun and and two can be very very successful and um, and, and so in in our process um, it is it is very akin to a any marketing communication uh, process and and you know in any large corporation there, there will be marketing people and marketing communication people and one of the very first steps is and they all have different formats and different processes but the very first step is is to is to document a a roadmap a creative brief um, could even be a miniature business plan whatever it is but it's a documented um, um, uh, a roadmap that articulates who you're talking to, the challenge, the background, why you're here, everything you know about um, what you're trying to do, a description of the product, a description of your of your prospect. Um, you know, it's basically seven questions that that need to be answered. In our particular case, because we're trying to generate an idea for a word or or an invented word that will eventually turn into a brand name, we go um, a little bit deeper than that. At. Um, but that's the very first step. So it's so we have the strategy discovery session, um, and we have a meeting of the minds on on what we're trying to achieve, how that what the objective is, how's, how that objective will be measured, um, and then as I say, we go a little bit deeper into you know if if your brand or brand to be was a superhero, what uh, uh, who might it be? If it was a celebrity, how might that celebrity go about uh, solving uh, this problem? Um, so we peel the onion. In a, huh. a, a little bit, a little bit more, um, and so we want to. It's really a distillation process because we're not producing a television commercial or a set of of direct mail pieces. We're trying to get all of the of the customers' value proposition into a single word. Yeah, I mean, you're um, you're really distilling all of that down to this one essence, right? I mean, it's. That's that's right. That's yeah. right. So you, you know, there's a lot. You separate the the, the wheat from the from the chafe, and um, and and then from from there, um, it it sometimes will work together with the client doing creative work. Other times, and mostly, they'll go, "Hey, that's what you know. You're the experts. We're going to stick to our knitting and do our business, and we're going to let you do uh, your business." Yeah. And then, so I get together uh, with uh, uh, our team, and we divide it up into what we call sandboxes and 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 there may be say say if it's a um uh, a, a, a conservancy for the environment a nonprofit or something there's a lot of a lot of sandboxes you can work with you could work with the idea of sustainability and conservancy and you know, look at the Soros dictionary, things like that. You could look at okay, there's flora and there's fauna. So we have um, a library full of dictionaries of of flora and and fauna, and it and it maybe we come across um, the California live oak, and that happens to be a, a particularly um, exceptionally strong uh, solution for this. Or it may be that that there's a Latin derivative of the California live oak, or that maybe the cousin of the California California live oak is the is the uh, bristlecone pine, um, and maybe the bristlecone pine uh, is situated in Joshua Tree, and all of a sudden Joshua starts making so a lot a, of sense for the name. You, you really do go into a pro. It's an intentional process of this sort of free association, just to get yourself a, a foundation of what you're going to do for your client. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And then from that foundation, um, that's then when, you know, sometimes you put it aside and, it you know, some idea that you hadn't yeah. heretofore made the connection percolates up. Okay, so that that's how you're doing that seeding, so to speak. And I, I realized, of course, we started talking about trees. And, and uh, <laughs> that's right. But, well, uh, what's interesting yeah, is I, I love that, you know, you're, you're starting to pull this thread and see where it takes you. And so l- l- let's say for, you know, the, the average small business owner, you know, that's listening to like like this show, you know, what would you say is the most important aspect when they're trying to come up, even just with a name for their, their company, um, you know, some, some simple tips that, that they need to take into account when working on that? Well, you gotta have to understand that, that, you know, a great name won't help a bad business model. Um, that's, real, that's really, let's just back up because, <laughs> because, you know, we talk about great ideas, you know, don't build a business either. Uh, execution does. So uh, that, that is a very, very important thing to, to get out there. I love it. Right. So, you know, so I was going to say, you know, Theranos or Theranos, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Oh yeah. Um, great name. We love that one. Everyone in my business loves that one, but, <laughs> but bad business model. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, sort of the epitome of a bad business model model isn't it that, that really is so so uh, so a great name won't won't help it um and and a bad name um you know it it won't kill your business okay um but it can be a distraction it, it, and sometimes that distraction is good but a bad name um will get people scratching their heads too much we like it when people scratch their heads when they hear the name okay there's the, there's an advantage to that but but not too much we don't want to put too big a question mark between the name um, um, and and the company and 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 you really only get you know one chance to make a, a first impression. So um, you know a, a brand. No other part of your business is going to be used more. Uh, frequently and wider than the brand name, right? So, sure. however you go about doing it, um, take take your time and do it. So, we have a number of clients who who have a name in mind, and it just came to them, why ever? And it and it may be particularly strong. They may have may have some meaning to it. You know, when you're a small business owner, or business owner, you're doing um, that 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 you want. Um, however, you know, they want to make sure that 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 it's that there isn't a better alternative so that's the bar that's set and we look very hard at a whole bunch of other ideas and nine times out of ten you know we don't come back and say your baby's ugly we say here's some alternatives here's why they work and they generally go uh, with the with the name that they originally came up with. However, their degree of confidence with selecting that name and building a brand around that and building their entire company around that is extraordinarily high because they've yeah. done their due diligence um, and they've uh, 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 and they and there's, they're much more confident that that this name is uh, has the legs to carry them across. Yeah, it's been vetted, if you will. Right? Yeah, yeah absolutely, we, we, absolutely. Yeah, oh, that, that's great. I, I like that. Huh, that's cool. So, okay, uh, we, you know, we talk about stories a lot and, you know, pulling stories out of these company names and, and brands and everything. Uh, if you could share, a, you know, a, a, a great success story or, or a, a failure, you know, um, uh, when working with teams, and you don't have to mention the name, actually, if, you know, we don't have it out there, but, uh, you know, certainly love to get some uh, you know, background on, on something like that. Sure. Sure. You know, it's funny. You should, should ask that. Um, you know, we just, we, we just, uh, launched, um, our very first Norman awards and the Norman awards are like the Oscars or the Grammys or, or the Clio. So our, our Norman awards are for our winners for the great new brand names of, of 2016. So we looked at a bunch of submissions, evaluated them and then awarded, uh, the Norman. Nice. Um, and if you're interested, I'll tell you how the Norman award or the, how the one named Norman came. Sure. Sure. Um, but, uh, let me, I'll get to, you know, I'll, t- sure. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that now. So, so in the year 1066, uh, William the Conqueror, uh, invaded, uh, Britain, which every, um, every high school student in Britain knows, um, led the Normans, the great Normandy invasion of, of Britain. So what the hell does that have to do with names? <laughs> right. Well, that was a significant event. If you're a linguistic 
nerd uh, like we are in that it expanded the English language um, from maybe 50,000 words to, to 250,000 uh, words. And so the English language is really a great tool. There are more words meaning the same number of things in the English language than, than any other uh, language around. So, so we named it the Norman Awards uh, after that. So, so there, there's, 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 here's, we had in multiple winners and a couple of losers, but one of the ones that that we liked uh, was from Samsung, and Samsung had a feature to one of its uh, washing machines, and they simply called the feature "Ad Wash." All right, now now that's not going to win a MacArthur Genius Award, but. Um, it, you know, it, it, it appeals to anyone who has ever found a sock uh, under the bed while the washing is going. And so I'm going to add this to the wash. So so it's not particularly creative or, or clever, per se, but it's extraordinarily powerful. So so that one that one won um, uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, Norman makes sense. for us. Yeah. And then and then one that 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 we don't think works so well, but 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 we know what be a success anyway is there's a new hotel chain called scion all right and it's been in it's been in the press a lot lately and scion is designed to a people to to the millennials right and and we don't think that works very well because it is is so it's such a blunt instrument it it says hey millennials we know who you're about and uh, we know that uh, you aspire to be uh, rich and cool and so we're going to call this a scion well you know i don't I, we don't think that works very well because you know no, i don't think anybody 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 when he, anybody would love to be a scion right you know the, the sure. offspring of a rich and wealthy person but but i don't think anyone goes around bragging about that um, I don't think anyone goes around and says says you know I, I you know I went to the Scion and boy look yeah. aren't, aren't I cool it, it's just sort of you know I just I think millennials if anything are sort of you know at least in their minds are less consumer driven or less materialistic um, they right. may not act that way but something that says um, yeah, it's a that, defining characteristic that's right. yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so this is about you know privilege and honored wealth and conspicuous consumption and other living <laughs> that's something you want but it's not something you're going to advertise that's right no, that's cool that's that's great so okay uh, so now looking back you know we, we always uh, you know we had the the benefit of hindsight here uh when you were first getting started first launching you know uh, uppercase back in 09 if you could go back and give yourself one critical piece of advice that that could help you out a lot what what, what would you tell yourself um yeah that's a really good question um and and i have to think hard uh about that but but i think the answer is to you need two goals i think maybe three but you need two one is a realistic one and whether that's going to be you know this much revenue these many clients even just you know getting through the task lists uh, in in 12 months or whatever it might be you need to set a, a realistic goal one you can achieve so you can feel pretty satisfied um at at the end of the year the end of end of the metaphorical day the, mm -hmm. the second goal i think ought to be really big and hairy and audacious and, you know, call it a home run goal or a stretch goal or a grand slam goal. I think there is something that's to be said for reaching for the stars. You may not get any, but you won't come up with a handful of mud either. Yeah. Um, and so and so we set a realistic goal and, you know, we exceeded it by the middle of the third quarter, um, which was really, really appealing. And and um, and I uh, just wonder if we would have set one twice that what might have happened. Ah, yeah, that, that is tr a really good, uh, you know, insight in looking at that. And uh, I, I think that's valuable. Huh. You know, wh which is it? Is it the, you know, the realistic one or the big hairy, you know, one? Uh, uh, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's very well. That's why you so, have two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but right. don't sell it. Don't sell yourself short on your stretch goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's for sure. So this is fascinating stuff, and and really, really good. I think uh, you know material. So if if our listeners want to learn more about uppercase and and uh, get a hold of you, what, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, visit our website, uppercase branding dot com um or simply mike p 
uh, as in pile, uh, at uppercasebranding.com. So um, email, and if they want to mail us a letter, we'd be happy to receive that, too. <laughs> or a shot glass, right? <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's or great. Even, well, thanks better, again. A, even better, yeah. a big fat check. That'll there work. you go. Yeah, there you, right. go. Yeah, there those, you go. Those we do like. Mailbox money is something we, we hold in high regard yeah. here on the yes. Small Business Show. That's what we do. Well, Mike, Mike, thanks for hanging out with us. We, uh, everyone has learned a lot, especially me, which is usually the most important. So <laughs> that's fantastic. I really appreciate your time. Our pleasure. Thank you. Folks, thanks so much for listening. And uh, visit us on Facebook at businessshow.co slash Facebook, where we have our small business support group. We'd love to see you over there. Between now and then, make sure you keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.